thank you so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. So today we're going to talk about a fun topic that I'm sure lots of people who are in the role-playing industry want to talk about. I say that with lots of sarcasm. So today's topic we're going to talk about, if people want diversity in their tabletop games, how about they start with the iconic archetypes? Now, before I even get into this really hardcore, let me introduce myself for those who don't know. Hello, my name is Lewis Porter Jr. and this of course is my lovely channel. And what we talk about is all kinds of interesting things that go on in the world of comic books and role-playing games. And this is one that kind of came up with me doing a little research on some other stuff. And I was like, oh, let's talk about this. So, you know, I'm a big fan of people who talk about diversity. And I mean that in the sense of they talk about it. They don't actually want to do anything. They'll talk about diversity, but there's no action that connects with it. You know, oh, we love diversity. We want diversity but it's not very diverse. And I'm, you know, African-American, as you can see. So I'm going to be looking at things from a very, I'd say, specific point of view to see what that really means. So for me, diversity means that the upper echelons of the company are diverse. The people working on the work staff are diverse. The people involved in the creative stuff are diverse. Most importantly, the actual product you put out is diverse. As in, I see different things to where I can find some way where I can look at it and be like, oh, I can see where I connect with this. This is the important part that doesn't usually get talked about a lot. But most people do like the idea of, I love diversity because it's a safe word and makes you sound like a good person. But if you don't execute actually on that, you're just you know giving lip service. And too many people want to give lip service without action. So here we are. So when I was working on my Neo Exodus role-playing game campaign, I went out of my way to really focus on doing really different kinds of iconic characters. And these are the characters that are said to be, you know, in any simple sense, what your settings average person would be thought of like. So I wanted to take a few things and focus them on being really diverse. And one of the more interesting characters that I created for my setting was a cavalier. And the basic idea for me is cavalier is mounted horseback fighter. And I said, well, how can I make this really different? Because when people hear the word cavalier, they have a very specific knight on the back of a horse with metal armor and a lance. And, the, and I said, well, what can you make it different? How different can you make it? What's, what fits that same trope in those same ideas, warrior on the back of a horse with a large lance, but you make it different from what you'd expect to be. So I looked at Native American tribes, you know, not really a surprise since I work for a Native American tribe. And I thought, oh, that'd be a cool interpretation of what a cavalier would be. What would a Native American cavalier look like? What would they have? How would they be different? And so we drew up a character. Um, the character's name was Long Shadow. We drew it up. He's there with his horse. He's dressed in, I'd say, tribal attirement. I didn't want to pick one tribe or the other because if you don't know, there's, you know, 500 federally recognized tribes right now in the U.S. So you don't want to pick one or another. I want to show more of a cross section of this is what I think would look respectfully in this type of focus if I'm doing a Native American cavalier, if I was going to reinterpret it like that. And when I put the character out, I had so many people comment saying, you're appropriating their culture. I was like, what? Because that's what you're doing, you're appropriating. Now remember, I was definitely inspired by this. I wanted to be Native American focused to put with a Cavalier, that kind of setup. That was 100% guaranteed. But people were mad that it, I wasn't making it Native enough. And everybody got a perception of what they think it should be and what this thing should be. And it basically got to me when I told him, I'm like, look, we're building an iconic based on an idea that exists here on Earth. The planet where these guys are doing this stuff or the environment or the campaign setting doesn't exist like that. So there is no, you know, there are no Native Americans in our setting. But the representation of Native Americans in role playing is important. So at the same time, you better be respectful for what you're doing on that. Well, at the same time, influence other people so they can see the amazing thing that you're doing. It's really a catch-22 that can drive you crazy pretty quickly. And so many people get tied up into it. And 
I did this with several of my iconics. I just, I mean, I really just, I just wanted to make things that I thought would be cool and look cool that people had not really seen a lot of. That was always my focus. That was what I was trying to do. For example, we did an, uh, an anti-paladin uh, based on a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, childhood friend, a red-headed Scottish girl. And the picture is very different than what most people would consider for uh, anti-paladin. Most people are thinking big armor, big... Mm, uh, no, this was kind of not that. You know? And I always tried to pick things that were different than what you'd expect. Uh, one of my ones that I... We did a paladin, but we based it off of a Japanese samurai. They have a lot of similar ideas and concepts that I thought would work, but the actual character themselves, I made look African-American, Black, African, depending on how you want to call it, um, inspired by um, uh, Yasuke, the Nigerian, if I was right, Nigerian samurai that did actually exist. But I made the character female. You know, it's just it's just funny to me. Like also um, another character we did, um, Shani Bentu, we based it off of uh, Santine uh, Phoenix. I thought she had the right look. I was trying to do something Egyptian, something a little different. She had she had a costume she wore that I thought was a perfect little match, and it kind of made sense. And I was like, let's do this, and we did. I want diversity in things. So I put diverse things in the books so people can see different things. And maybe some people will see themselves. I did the ranger, um, Asher. I based it off a Zulu tribal member. You know? In fantasy, specifically Dungeons & Dragons, and even some Pathfinder, everyone goes from the perspective of, oh, it's European fantasy, and that's all it can be. And I always thought that was, like, ridiculous. You know, fantasy is fantasy. And fantasy now has been stretched in a way that most people can't even just say it's just fantasy. It's, it's, it is beyond what you think. But it isn't just European fantasy. No. It's fantasy. It's fantasy. Fantasy. You can make it whatever you want. You can create it whatever you want. You can style it anything you want. But if you want to talk about diversity and you don't do that in the books, then what are you really doing? I mean... They make all these iconic characters for every one of these companies, but most of them really aren't that diverse. You know, I mean, this sounds bad to say, but it's true. Most times, if I'm lucky, I'll see one black male, maybe a black female, and that's it. That's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get. Or you might have one Asian character, maybe. But I'm like, why aren't we just doing cool things? Make cool characters. Make cool characters. Focus on making cool characters. That's what you should be your thing. Cool characters and put a little diversity in. Put a little diversity in. It doesn't take much to do. Especially for all you people building all these new campaign worlds. I see Kickstarters every day about new campaigns being being created and stuff. But once again, you get to the iconic archetypes they build. Same old stuff. Same old white bread. Boring. Same thing. You know, how many times can you do the same thing over and over to get bored of it? Where's the creativity? Where's the difference? Where's all this stuff? Where's this so-called diversity you talk so much about? You don't execute it in actually the artwork for your product, so what are you talking about? You know, people screaming, oh, we're diverse. No, what they're really doing is saying we fill an agenda that we want specific people to look at what we've done and be happy and proud to support us. But we actually don't mean actual real diversity. Diversity of thought diversity of ideas diversity of creativity you should add those things to your <laughs> campaign worlds your kickstarters and get different stuff you know it's at some point the industry is going to realize that it isn't just one type of person playing specifically one type and i don't mean this in the sense of the one type of just gamer gaming i mean Look, I've been on enough games to know people role play for all different types of reasons. But I do know specifically if you're going to role play and you want to get people who don't look like you or are different from you into it, you need to show them something where they can connect to it. You know, I was a geek from day one. Once I saw Star Wars, I became a geek. So I was a geek. I was indoctrinated by it. I was involved with it and I was. So with that, I did geeky things. Not a problem, no big deal. Everybody gets that. But not everybody sees that initially. Not everybody knows that initially. I think people need to see themselves in the work you're doing. 
and if all you see when you're doing that work is yourself and that's it and nobody else like that you've done something wrong you know try something different try something that people wouldn't expect I said it once and I'll say it again creativity is the ability to put two things together that don't seem like they would fit together aka peanut butter and chocolate boom so that's what you should be doing if you're really about diversity be creative with your diversity be creative with the people you hire to do the work for your diversity be creative in the art be be diverse in your art show different stuff i just want more from this industry and we're not doing enough so if you want to talk about diversity to me feel free but put your money where your mouth is and you know let's see what kind of characters you've created that are diverse I don't have time to sit here and watch you talk about diversity and have you actually not do anything. But that's just me. Thank you so much for watching my video. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, if you like the video, click on the bottom and subscribe. And or even better, click the thumbs up if you liked it or thumbs down if you hated it. Hey, I'm good either way. Thank you so much for your time and I'll talk to you all later. Hey, thank you for checking out my channel. Do me a favor, check out my other videos, and if you like what you see, subscribe.